Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I have the honor to um, introduce to you our customized modules department. Now in Germany, we've been uh, working intensively with Deutsche Bahn. Currently, four of our 38 uh, uh, switches uh, are um, approved um, by Deutsche Bahn. They have uh, the Q1 HPQ quality certification. First one was Foslow uh, Lies. Uh, for the past uh, 20 years, we've been making um, uh, switches there. Uh, we've converted the technology in the switch industry with two different areas. The first one is urban transports. Um, Many of our rails are used there for tramways, and the second segment is something that we call conventional railways or high-speed lines. The second uh, factory is uh, uh, Fossil Kutschi for Keen. Um, they've had um, an approval of Deutsche Bahn for uh, many years, so we make the blanks for the blades there. Uh, we make a cast uh, tail, and these parts are directly delivered to Deutsche Bahn to the Witten um, factory. We work closely with that, and then the blades, the switch blades, are um, processed there further, and they're inserted in the switches. The third one is the French um, factory in Reichshofen, and there we make large parts for switches. Uh, we work on the blades. We cannot fulfill the whole, all of the needs for Germany. Um, we uh, make different elements there, and then. There is uh, another factory in Poland where in the future we will make the uh, frogs uh, for Deutsche Bahn. These uh, frogs um, have a tip which is heat treated and uh, we invested in that factory for that and that helps us uh, to um, establish um, the German standard in that factory and to work according to that. In the next three or four months, we'll be ready to build and process and weld these frogs and to heat treat them too. In the meantime, we have two um, skeleton agreements. The first one is for large uh, switch components. We are the deliverer. We are the we, we, we are su the supplier of a Witten factory in Toronto. Of a factory, our parts are delivered there and assembled, then sent to the work sites by Deutsche Bahn, and then we have a second uh, skeleton um, um, agreement, a master agreement uh, uh, for um, um, uh, switches um, and for track through switches where we uh, deliver the frogs. And we are um, located in Luxembourg and in Reichshofen. Uh, so we're not far away from the uh, German border. So we are well located and we can respond very quickly to any demand in Germany. As far as the topics that are most important to us um, today, uh, I selected two. Noise, of course, being one of them. This is a key topic that we have to deal with. And um, also the availability of the network at all times is all important. This is my second topic. Now, first of all, I'll talk about the monoblock manganese steel frog. This is a frog with um, a non-moving point, a rigid point. There's a standard that we follow as a supplier of Deutsche Bahn, but in the future, we will also work together with the research departments of Deutsche Bahn to find solutions to bring down wear and also to reduce noise in the frogs on a line or in any given line, there's also noise due to the reasons that were mentioned before. But if you have a frog with a stiff or rigid tip, there's always a gap. And this gap is an area where the wheel um, is not guided as well as to the rest of the switch. And because of this, in order to protect or close this, you use a small rail that you find on the side that guides the wheel. But this is not the reason why we need uh, a frog, uh, why we're presenting a frog from manganese steel. There are other reasons that speak in favor of this. As I said before, uh, this gap uh, leads to much noise. 
And uh, when we use the monoblock frog, we have a cast part in the middle that we optimally adapt to the different wheels uh, with uh, welded extensions, four welded extensions, so they fit directly into uh, the network. The uh, rails cannot be welded directly on the steel because the steel is between 12 and 14 percent manganese, which is a lot, and the rail steel cannot be welded on top. Because of this, uh, we have a stainless steel insert that we developed, and this insert it can connect with the monoblock, can connect to the monoblock and to the uh, rail extensions, uh, which are made of rail steel. Um, so this is the standard on the left uh, that Deutsche Bahn uses today. There are eight different models, but all of them are basically made in this uh, way. These are assembled. Frogs in the middle, you have a tip. This tip is made of a special steel. It's built from a special steel and then heat treated so that we get the right hardness, which is acceptable. And on either side, uh, uh, two wing rails are made. Uh, um, of uh, rails and everything is bolted together, which works very well. Unfortunately, um, you cannot uh, uh, do deposition welding on this uh, rail to optimize the shape. We have a cast part, like you can see on the right hand side, we have an optimized shape or an optimized guidance uh, surface on the frog. So we take into account a new wheel and a wheel that is re being reprofiled. And we uh, made sure that we give the, uh, with the help of software, we gave the frog the optimum shape so that um, the noise is much reduced. Uh, we just have to find the right uh, steel. Um, um, it needs to be both flexible and hard on the surface. This is precisely what manganese steel can do. The hardness, the basis of the manganese steel is uh, soft, but uh, with the uh, contact with the wheel, it gets very hard. And um, we get an optimum uh, hardness of up to uh, 450 Brunel. And for this, we use explosion um, heat treatment. So explosive substances are uh, uh, glued on top of the rail, and then you pour sand on top, and then you uh, trigger an explosion to get immediately the right uh, hardness of the rail. This is something that the rail would otherwise only get after a few weeks of use. And uh, uh, Sweden has been using this for the past uh, 20 years exclusively, Austria, Switzerland uh, also. And this is the technology which in the future uh, we uh, want to introduce on the rails or the switches of Deutsche Bahn too. Now, the next uh, thing that's important is the availability of the network in Germany. You know, the network of Deutsche Bahn, there's a lot of construction going on and many switches are exchanged. and. Um, uh, the people, this goes to show that the life cycle solution colleagues, you know, they uh, can uh, weld for uh, at 80 kilometers an hour, but when you change your switch, there's a hole in the track, so you have to um, uh, take out a, a switch and install a new one, and that takes time. But we found a, a, a solution. Um, we, we have found a way of delivering to the job site a, a turnkey a switch. We build it right away, put it on the um, sleepers as one unit. Um, now the, the rotting outside of the um, switch sometimes doesn't allow to assemble this, so we have the rotting on the two um, blade uh, assemblies so that we can put everything on one uh, rail car. And here on the right hand side you can see photographs of the project that we worked on together with BLS in Switzerland. We delivered uh, a whole fleet with six um, uh, switches uh, at one fell swoop with this uh, system. What we want, of course, is reduce the time uh, at the job site, you know, the installation time. So very quickly, uh, we have to act sometimes. Sometimes we only have four hours to do this job. And we have to prepare everything as well as possible. And this also goes for the setup um, of the rotting and um, of the uh, drive system. And here you can see the whole process for um, a ready-made uh, turnkey uh, switch. 
we have to um, prepare uh, the switches. So we have to know uh, what kind of time we have and when we have to install it. Uh, so we do the master plan, we do the design at the production, afterwards the uh, switch is uh, accepted and our um, factories, either by Deutsche Bahn or another customer in Germany or wherever, and then it is delivered to the job site uh, with a special freight car. and. Uh, then the companies installing uh, the switches, that's not us, but these um, um, people then install it. And then we take back the old switches and we recycle the old switches, which is also um, a topic that is very important to us. And we also maintain the switches and we sell the spare parts because, uh, as I said before, a switch must uh, have a service life of 40, 50 years and not all of the component parts uh, will have the same service life very often. Um, the uh, sleepers stay there, um, but the frogs uh, will have to be changed up to two times, for instance, during the service life. So this is pretty much all that I can tell you about the uh, switches and of course we're open uh, to your uh, questions thank you very much for listening